Hey guys, we're now going to talk about a type of projectile motion problem called horizontal launch or zero angle launch. And this happens basically when you throw something not in an angle like this, but in a straight horizontal line like this. So let's check it out. So horizontal launch, aka zero launch, is instead of throwing like this, we're going to launch something like this. So it's going to move like this, hit the ground, and all that. What's special about this is since I'm throwing in a horizontal axis, the initial velocity on the y-axis will be zero. That's the big thing to know here. And because that velocity will be zero, your equations will be simpler, and this becomes basically the simplest, the easiest type of projectile motion problems we can have. All right? So another thing you have is that since your initial velocity in the y-axis is zero, your initial velocity is composed entirely of your initial velocity on the x-axis, vox. Um, but the velocity in the x-axis, remember, never changes. Ax equals zero. So this is your permanent velocity, vx. So if you shoot something here with 30, that's your vx, and that vx will be 30 everywhere. Okay? I have here two boxes uh, reminding us of the steps of projectile motion problems. You pick the axis, the equation, I'm sorry, axis, interval, and equation, and then um, the four equations of motion we have. So let's do a quick example and see how this works. An object is launched horizontally, right? It's launched horizontally. This tells us that the initial velocity in the y-axis is zero. Um, and it looks kind of like this. Um, it's launched from a 50 meter high cliff or a building or whatever. So it starts here and it's launched horizontally. So it looks like this, flat in the x-axis with 30. So this 30 is my initial velocity. I can think of this as my initial velocity in the x-axis because it is entirely in the x-axis. Or I can think of this as my vx, which never changes. These are all the same. Okay? And this is 30 as well. So this guy is going to move like this and hit the ground somewhere over here. I can call this a and b or initial and final. There's only two intervals. So I'm just going to think of this as initial and final. There's only two points, rather, one interval. So I want to find the time that it takes to hit the ground. So it's just a time to go from initial to final, okay? Delta T. And part B is asking for range, which is delta X. Now, what's unique about time is that you can find time in the X axis or the Y axis. So when I'm determining my axis, time could be on either one. So what I want to do is I want to first check the x-axis. And the reason I'm going to do the x-axis first is because the x-axis is easiest, right? There's only one equation, and I don't have to even worry about picking one, an equation. So delta x equals vx t. If I'm looking for time, um, I just have to have delta x and vx. Here I know vx, it's 30, but I don't know delta x. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to solve this using the x-axis. But that's fine. Now I know for sure that it's going to come out of the y-axis. So time is going to come from the x or the y. So now we're going to have to go to the y-axis. Let me draw what this looks like on the y-axis. If you're limited to the y-axis and you're going from beginning to end, it would look like this. Right? So I'm going to draw this like this. And this is my initial velocity on the y. This is my final velocity on the y. And I know that my initial velocity on the y is 0. The final velocity I don't know. This has a height of 50, so my delta y is 50. Now be careful, going up is positive, that's our standard. Um, that's the convention that we're using. You're falling, so your delta y is going down, so it's negative 50 meters. What else do we have here? Between these two intervals, there's a time, and that's actually what we're looking for. And our fifth variable of motion that we're missing here is the acceleration on the y-axis, which is little g. Little g is going down, going down is uh, negative in this case, so little g, so the acceleration is negative g. Okay, so I need three out of five, and I have three out of five. One, two, three. V final is my ignored variable, put a sad face there. And to find delta x, I just have to pick one of the equations. And I'm going to use the equation that doesn't have v final, which in this case, uh, the third equation here will do. All right, so equation number three. Delta x equals vot plus half of at squared. This is sort of the original version of the equation, but we're talking about the y-axis. So I'm going to change this to delta y. And so this becomes the initial velocity on the y-axis, which is actually 0. So this whole thing is gone. 
um, plus half the acceleration the y-axis is negative g um, t squared so I know my delta y is negative 50 this equals negative if you combine this you get a negative 4.9 t squared and if I move things around t is the square root of 50 over 4.9 50 over 4.9 I get 3.2 seconds as my T and this is part A part B is asking for Delta X Delta X is obviously if you go through your steps determine the axis is obviously the X axis pick an interval there's only one interval here beginning to end and pick an equation the only equation for the X axis is Delta X equals VX T so to find delta x, I only need vx, which I have, and t, which I now have as well. Delta x equals vx, v is 30, and the time is 3.2. So delta x is 96 meters. All right? Pretty straightforward, I think. Um, hopefully you agree. And I want you guys to now try a practice problem, very similar setup, horizontal launch. Um, just a different set of numbers. So let's give this a shot.